I got caught in this last week of not having the mic turned on, so forgive me. I want to be sure I get it turned on this time. Um, I want to say we thank all of you for being here. I'm going tonight to begin or to continue the message thought on pressing on the Lord in prayer. And <clears throat> as I uh, do this, we're going to pray, and I'm going to probably talk more tonight, teach more than I will preach. And we'll see um, if this will be a blessing to you. If you would like to help support us, um, the bottom of the screen you can see how you could uh, donate. Uh, we do need uh, your prayers Probably above everything else, we're trying to reach souls for the Lord. We make no bones about it. Um, we do not want to be a church inside the four walls. We want to reach everybody, and I'm very thankful for the members that we have here. Uh, everybody is not, that's not their top calling. They have other callings, but there are those in our church that really, that's their calling. They want to reach people directly, go out where they are and bring them into the house of God. And if you are out there and you're looking for a church where God is actually moving, we are that kind of a church. Uh, I'm not boasting about us. I'm boasting about what God has done here. If he had not done what he's done, I wouldn't really have any reason to invite you to come here. But I do invite you for these reasons. If God is here and if God is moving, it won't be the same move of God every service, every Sunday morning or every what, whatever night or whatever time we have service. But if he's moving and if lives are being changed for Christ and if um, the word of the Lord is being preached here, why well, come? Uh, if that's what you're looking for, uh, I won't, I tell this to people, or maybe I shouldn't, but I tell people I'm not going to tell you a lie to keep you coming here. I must tell you the truth that will set you free, help you to set others free, help you to grow in the Lord. Sometimes it's going to kind of hurt because everything we do as a disciple is not pleasant, but it helps us to grow. Other times might feel pretty good, but however it is, we want the Lord to disciple us in the truth and in the power of the Holy Ghost in a holy life. And so... If you know anyone in the Sand Springs area, Cleveland, Manford, Oilton, Drumright, Sepulpa, West Tulsa, North Tulsa, Downtown Tulsa, wherever around the Sand Springs area, we would like to invite every family who, who, who is looking for a, a home to come and say, I want something that will change me and my family and bless me that I can be the person I ought to be in Jesus Christ. So I know we ask uh, for donations at times, but the real reason we're here is souls. If you'd like to donate, you can see that on the screen in purple. You can come back and look. These are our services in yellow and black. You can see our physical location. And if you're mailing us anything, please mail it to the Tulsa address that you see. Don't mail it to Sand Springs. Uh, use the mailing address. So at this time, I want to get into the message. Uh, would you bow your heads with me? I want to pray. Father, I ask you to minister to each and every one that is listening tonight and those that will be listening at other times. And I do ask you, dear God, please help me, Lord. Please help me tonight that what I say would be your word and nothing else. And that people's lives, physically, spiritually, above all, their emotions, their minds would be, would be helped and blessed. Those that need healing in any of these areas, uh, deliverance in any area spiritually, whatever the need may be in there, those that are afflicted in some way, homes that are broken up, Lord, uh, whatever, God, marriages that need help, oh God, I'm asking you to help me and to use me tonight. Lord Jesus, I ask this. In your precious name, I love you, Lord. You love them. I love them. Bless them, I pray tonight. Amen. Again, the subject that I'm working on here has continued on my mind. It's about pressing. Paul said this in Philippians, the third chapter. He said, 
forgetting those things which are behind. He said, since I've found the Lord in my life, and I had a life, he could say. He actually spoke and detailed the life that he had in the Pharisaical religion. And he had um, attained many top areas or echelons in his life including in that religion of the Pharisees. But he did not know God. And when the Lord met him and changed him on the road to Damascus that day, he uh, would say there, I believe it is the Philippians, the third chapter, he would say, when I met the Lord, and he called it the excellency, when I came into the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord, he said, I counted everything else in my life, but he called it dung. It was worthless that I might have Christ and that I might have the righteousness of the Lord, which came by faith in the Lord and not by works. And he went on down a little further in that chapter, the third chapter of Philippians, and he, uh, he said... You know, I was caught by the Lord. I was arrested. I was stopped and caught by Him for a purpose that, that I might be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and called into the ministry, but that I would become a minister to, to many people that were not Jews. They were Gentiles. Everything but a Jew, Jew, uh, everything but a Jew is classified as a Gentile in the Bible. And God was going to open and had already begun to open the door to the Gentiles through the Apostle Peter as he was praying one night there on a rooftop. And he opened up the door to a Roman family, a Roman named Cornelius. He was a Gentile. But Paul would be the Apostle to the Gentiles. Peter would be more to the Jews. And as uh, Paul had gotten saved. You could say radically saved if you want to, but it was a radical change in his life when the Lord came into his life. And he was actually, he saw the Lord in the sky brighter than the, well, it was about noonday, and the Lord appeared in the sky brighter than the sun. And the Bible said he was on his way to do things to destroy the church, but the Lord arrested him as a good word for it, stopped him, and called him to, into the ministry uh, of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he really did not even know until that day when the Lord forcefully came in front of him. He asked him, who are you? He said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. And uh, that day, Paul's life was changed, and he became a new man. And a few days later, a man by the name of Ananias, led by the Holy Ghost, came into him. He, he went blind on that road that day and could not see. Uh, and that was a blinding sight that he saw in the sky. And, and for three days he was blind and, and he fasted after he had met the Lord and he was praying. And, and God sent the, this man Ananias to pray for him, lay his hands on him that he could receive his sight and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that's what happened. The man came to him and prayed for him, and he received the Holy Ghost. What an operation of the Lord in all of this, and using Ananias and directly speaking to Paul like he did. And in all of this, the Apostle Paul would say later on, and what is one of the letters that he would write after he had begun the ministry and was now operating as an apostle to various places, one of which was of the Philippian people in Philippi. But he wrote a letter to them, and it, he, one of the things he said was, he said, this is what I used to be. But when I met the Lord, he said, I counted everything that I used to be worthless for the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, and he said, uh, I, this is, is not where he said this, but in the book of Acts, you'll follow the Apostle Paul in his, his missionary journeys and in his um, imprisonments for the sake of the gospel. And one 
person he came in front of was king a king and he actually was given a chance to speak about why, what it was that he was imprisoned over and how he put it to this king was this he said oh king I'm so glad to be able to stand here in front of you right now and to tell you about what God has done for me he said I, I wish you were just like me except for the chains that I'm in and he said uh, he said oh king this is what happened to me on that road to Damascus the Lord appeared to me and called me saved my soul and he said these words and then I'm coming back to Philippians the third chapter he said he said I have not been disobedient to the vision that heavenly vision the Lord gave me on the road that day until this present hour what happened to me Paul was saying was such a change and, ex and such an experience in my life that only God could give him and God mercifully and graciously saved this man who was destroying and tearing up the church of God that Jesus had purchased with his own blood on that cross but the Lord was merciful to him and he said, since that day, I have not been disobedient unto that heavenly vision. And he said, I wish you were just like me, except for the chains here. Well, back over in Philippians, the third chapter, he came a little distance from his pedigree, what he was once was, and from the chains the Lord had done in his life. And then he said some words like this. He said, you know, he said, I, I do not count myself or I don't think or believe that I have gotten to the place I was apprehended by the Lord to get to. He said, but this one thing I do, he said, forgetting those things that are behind. And here's the reason and the, the subject matter of this message that I began last week last week about pressing on the Lord he said but this one thing I do I forget what is behind me and some of us we've got a whole lot both accomplishments and and troubles and trials and tribulations that are in our past but Paul said this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press. The woman that uh, many of you know about was, who was a widow, uh, excuse me, a, uh, a woman who had an issue of blood. She, she bled all the time for 12 years she had had this affliction but um, she went to the doctors over and over again and she is like so many of us out here today she could name this pill and name that pill if they had pills back then she could name this procedure and that procedure she could name the best doctors and the the best so whatever hospital types they had in those days she could name all that stuff like we can but she could not name anything that healed her but when she heard about Jesus passing by, the Bible said, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She had gone to the doctors and spent all of her money and got worse. But she said, if I can just get to Jesus. Well, it appears he was surrounded by people in a crowd. And as he was journeying past where she was, that word comes up again she had to press her way through the crowd in her sickness I find no um, scripture that said anybody helped her to get to Jesus but she had to push her way through in that crowd and it seems like maybe she literally was on the ground crawling to get to Jesus perhaps but she pressed her way she in fact forgot about those things, the doctors and all of their procedures that she had gone through in the past, 
and she pressed her way to the Lord and she touched his garment and when she touched it the Bible said virtue went out of Jesus into her body and she was she was instantly healed by the um, by the Lord and the Lord stopped and turned around and said who touched me and I want to say this tonight people that press on the Lord they press on him for him he's going to somewhere along the line as you press to get to him he's going to stand still and stop and turn and he's going to say who is this that keeps calling my name well he already knows and he knew who that woman was but for all of us to know that he knew this and for her to be brought out in the open and for him to speak to her the way he spoke he turned and he said who touched me and his disciples said Lord there's people all around you what do you mean who touched you he said who touched me and the woman fearfully I believe she stood and or she stood and said it was me and he said woman your faith hath made you whole we are in a time now that as I talk with you I, I said this last week I'm going to take my time if no one listens to this message I'm going to listen to it because these thoughts I believe came from God and they are good for the there's an old saying what's good for the um, for the goose is good for the gander well if it's good for the people it's good for the preacher it's good for everybody and I want to hear it and I will listen to these thoughts again tomorrow but I want to say that the Lord um, is someone every one of us need to press on I want to darken this thought and I use that terminology I'm going to talk about some dark things you that do know on a physical level and a intellectual level that our world and our country our nation is in times of such upheaval and turmoil and horrendous things are going on in our country and in our world that it has never been like this on a worldwide scale like it is now period many of us in America are used to going to the movies or sitting at home on our couch watching television watching movies and there may be things that scare you in those movies or there may be things that are thrilling in those movies uh, there may be all kind of scenes that are exciting and very dangerous but when it's all over you get to get up from your couch and go to bed and everything's going to be the same as it was tomorrow and you may look at our country right now from wherever you are and you may be looking at it kind of like a motion picture you know when they watch these movies there are emotions that are evoked in a movie and people will scream sometimes when something suddenly takes place that's disastrous maybe a bomb blows up that nobody was expecting everybody in the, in the theater oh, they gasp well as you look at your world right now you may have gasped at the things that are going on the times we live in Jesus said when I come again he said they're going to be like the days of Noah but they're going to be worse than those days those days they were destroyed by the flood yes they were you and I were going to be going through these things for a long time it seemed like it's not going to happen in just a moment and we're gone it's going to be going on and on and on and it is right now and I want to say to all of us tonight some of the thoughts if I can get to them here quickly and I'm going to do that are important they are important in a way that I had to think about what I'm getting ready to say to you so let me begin here as we're looking at the times we live in and the subject is pressing on the Lord I want to say some things about us first of all Isaiah the 55th 
chapter verse 8 through 11 may be a familiar scripture to some of you. Isaiah said, for my, God speaking in Isaiah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm going to skip to verse 11. He said, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God's words change things. It changes situations. It gives warnings. It gives revelation of things that we would not know, we wouldn't see them, and we wouldn't understand them. To be clear, very sober now, this is urgent that we get a hold of some of these things. This subject is about pressing on the Lord. There is a real reason to press on the Lord. As we press on Him in prayer, God will be eventually moved by us. As we pray and come to get into communion, real communing with God, God's Word is going to say some things to us. One of them is that some of the things in the Word of God that we never understood before, we're going to begin to understand what they really mean. I said this a moment ago. God's Word changes situations. His Word will give us warnings. His Word will give us revelation of things we would never know, we don't see, or we don't understand. But by His Word, and I want to say right beside that, his words are spirit and they are life. They are not just words. The Holy Ghost will be in the Word of God for the people that will press on the Lord to hear what God is saying or what God wants us to know. Period. I might say now, there will be people who will never know what God is saying, what God is doing. They will not understand it until destruction takes them all away. They neither wanted God, they would not press on the Lord, they would not come to God to really find Him. They would not accept Him as God. They had their own way, their own lives. They were their own gods, and they would not accept Him. But the day would come when they would know that God is God. So, His wisdom... When we press on Him, that means we are saying, Jesus, I can't live without You. God, I must hear what You're saying. Do not leave me in the dark. I do not want to be blind in an hour like this. I don't want to be a deaf Lord where I don't hear You because You are. And we need to know this. He is both speaking and He is revealing to whosoever is willing to pay the price to get to the place where we can hear God. We can see the Lord. We can understand Him. And we are sensitive to Him. So when we press on the Lord, He will cause us to begin to take actions. He'll take over our actions and He will begin to use us as His temple we're not God in the temple anymore. He is. And He's using us, His temple, freely now. And the actions out of our bodies are no longer the actions we would have taken. The things we're going to do will not have been the things we had plans to do. We may pass up jobs we always wanted in the past to obey God. They looked good when they came along finally. <clears throat> But under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the direction of the Holy Ghost, he said no. And we said okay. In other words, <clears throat> he's going to take over our minds in a good way. What we're supposed to do, we'll have a mind to get up finally and go do it 
period. So many times we could probably identify with this. I had a mind to do it, but I just didn't have the get up and go to do it. My get up and go got up and went. But when the Lord is inspiring you, he will cause you to get up and go. He'll have, he'll give you the mind to get up and get this thing done. You've been pressing on the Lord and he has been impressing himself into you. We become doers of his word. That's a scripture. We become doers of his word and not hearers only. In this pressing on the Lord, Nehemiah 8 and 10 begins to become a ever increasing reality in our soul and our spirit. Nehemiah 8 and 10 <clears throat> begins a certain way, but it ends up with these words, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Our joys will become the joy of pleasing God. That's a joy to us. Abiding in His favor becomes a joy to us. His presence with us blesses our spirit man so much that that is all we desire with all of our heart. Psalm 16 verse 11, the Bible said, In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. This then becomes that God-given joy that is our strength. This joy, listen close now, strengthens our spirit man in its desire and its hunger for Christ. My spirit begins to get hungry, not for food, not for the lake, not for a vacation. My spirit gets hungry. My desire in here gets hungry and thirsty for Christ. And that beatitude comes right to the front now. Jesus said in Matthew, the fifth chapter, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We become more hungry for God's peace that we experience when we're in His presence. We become hungry for His joy that we experience in His presence. We become so hungry to abide in the love of God, in His favor, and in His grace. That joy is so great, there is no other joy like it in the world. I said it a minute ago, <clears throat> even our food and our water become something we want less and less of because we just want Him and that joy that is feeding our spirit man. We want that more and more and more. Our <laughs> now I want to say something that is so very important. If you want to write this down, our spirit man is so important. Why? Our spirit is the connection between God and us, spiritually speaking. And when our spirit is not allowed to live because we live a sinful life, a willful, selfish, self-willed, self-centered life, and when our spirit is under the dominion of our flesh man, our carnal man, the spirit is warring with our flesh, trying to take control of this body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Our spirit is to be in communion with the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. But when he's not allowed to live, our spirit is not allowed to live. When our spirit is not allowed to be in control of this, this body that God gave us, when he who is to be controlled by the Holy Ghost is not allowed by the flesh to have fellowship with God Almighty, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and then to let them flow up into us, into our affections, our emotions, our, our attitudes, our thoughts, our words, our very being and what we do, our plans, our whole being, when that does not happen, then our spirit man shrivels up. He becomes weak. He is starved like you see those people in Auschwitz. 
and others who have been in prison where they were given no food and all you could see was the bones and the skin. They truly were skin and bones. And this spirit man that God gave you to communicate with God and to have whatever God and the spirit man, whatever we get from the Lord in our spirit man, to have that come up inside of this temple and bless this temple in wisdom and understanding and knowledge of the things of God and bless this body to become the vehicle of the Lord to go do God's will in this world, to be a blessing in places and in ways we could never be if we tried to just do it in the flesh. But the Spirit of the Lord would direct us and we become effective for the Lord. But when we starve Him, that spirit man shrivels up and he becomes weak, starved, no longer effective in his ability to actually receive direction and strength from the Holy Ghost. Our spirit loses and begins to get weak. Its strength is lost. It gets weak. It falls into a paralysis. It's going even on past that state of being lukewarm. It falls into a frozen state toward God. What is actually happening when that happens is we're heading toward that thing, this thing called in the scriptures, dead in sin and trespasses. That's what's happening. We go there and we will get there if we do not take care of our spirit man. Then we will be left to the lusts of our flesh, to the lusts of our senses, to do the sensual things and fulfill the appetites and pleasures of the flesh. But we have left off life everlasting in the Lord through Jesus Christ. Communion with God and His Spirit has been broken. But as we come to God and we press on the Lord, the things of God will begin to revive in us. Things that were dormant. They were shriveled up paralyzed, indeed dead to God. They become vibrant in us once again and we become sensitive once again to both spiritual and physical realities that we did not perceive in the natural. These were things that were there all the time, but we were dead to them until God's Spirit came over us, came over our spirit and began to Restore us again. And as we press on the Lord with all of our heart and our soul and our mind, doing this brings us toward God. And listen, it becomes very much more, uh, what's the word? A reality. That's not the word, but tangible is the word. It becomes tangible. It's something you can hold, you can see, you can feel it. When we press on God and He begins to restore us, that action, God allowing it, God wanting it, God's unmerited favor, His grace making it possible, His mercy and His love making it possible. As we begin to press again upon the Lord, there's going to be some things that change in us. This then will bring us into line with God's Word. His truth. Not some flimsy, compromising, feel-good, flim-flammy words. He will bring you to His Word, which is eternal. His truth that never changes. He will bring you to His ways that are solid, like the rock Jesus spoke about. You will begin to give way your attitudes will not be the ones you used to have. But you will have those beautiful beatitudes of Matthew chapter 5 where the Lord continually said, Blessed are they. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Blessed are the pure in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are you when you shall be persecuted for my name's sake. All of those blessed things, those things will become a part of your life. We also, as we come, and this is so important, as we press on the Lord, I'm going to close here in a few minutes. I'm not going to hold you real long tonight. But as we press on the Lord, 
We also, and this is something I, I'm going to give his name a shout out if his daughter ever hears this, amen, or his family. But um, Sister Duncan over at the Coweta Church, pastor's wife, um, her father, Brother Billy Murray, stood in our International Assembly one year as he talked about God being the top priority in the church. And he took a symbol of the Lord, uh, it was our church flag, which is actually symbolizes the Lord Jesus Christ. If you ever wonder what that flag is all about, it's about Jesus. It's all about Him. And uh, he took that flag in its stand and stood it out in the middle of the stage. And he began to make a statement that was so clear. And everybody could see it. It was simple. He said, you know, if this is the Lord, then someone over here draws near to the Lord and someone over there draws near to the Lord and someone over here draws near to the Lord and someone over there draws near to the Lord while they're drawing near to him they're drawing near to each other as we press on the Lord and others press on the Lord not only are we drawing near to him but we're drawing near to each other. And as we do that, there are some very particular things that are going to have to be dealt with as we do this. So tonight I'm going to just say that one of them will be this. We will have to get rid of disunity if we're going to come to Jesus and he's going to get rid of it as we come the closer we come to him there's going to be change in us changes we did not suspect would ever happen they will be changes by God where he will begin to do things in his own way that will cause you and you and you and you to if there was any division among you if you press on him you can't draw near to God without drawing near to each other. And if you draw near to each other, if there are any things in between us that produce division and schism in the body of Christ, that's going to, that's going to leave. Either we will leave the Lord and not press on Him and come to Him and be lost, or we will come to Him, and as we come, He's going to remove any barriers between us. He will not allow it in His presence. His Word will not allow it. He's not going to change. He's going to have a church that is one as the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. So as we're pressing on the Lord, some of our proclivities, some of our past, um, the things we were taught that separated us from other brothers and sisters of the Lord, these things are going to give way and have to be done away with by the Spirit of God like it was with Peter on the rooftop that uh, night there uh, in uh, Acts chapter 10 as God dealt with him about things that separated people uh, and he was getting ready to bring some people together that had always been separate but whom God hath cleansed nobody is supposed to call them common or unclean and they're as good as anybody else if God cleans them up and we need to accept them for real as brothers and sisters. If we're coming to the Lord and they're coming to the Lord, they're coming to the same place. And in this place, God will not allow division. I would also say that as we come together, we're going to be far more effective as this person presses on the Lord and that person presses on the Lord and others are pressing on the Lord. But what, listen here, what when we're pressing on Him, if you've ever pressed, if you've ever watched these people um, that are at a, a, a wine press, they put grapes in there and they get in there with their feet and they march around in that press and out of that press comes the, the juice of the grape. It extrudes outward. So as they press on the grapes, something of the grape comes out. When we press on the Lord, 
as that woman who touched the Lord, pressed to get to him. When she finally touched him, virtue came out of him and she was healed of her affliction. As we press on the Lord, there's going to come virtue from the Lord out of him to begin to heal all of our, you name it, faults, uh, things in us that need to be removed are going to begin to leave us. And we're going to be, we may even be taught before we get it. Peter was told to do something before he understood it. But when he did it, finally he was able to understand it. He was able to perceive that with God, there is no respecter of persons. So I want to say that, and as I said, I'm not going to speak very long, so I'll probably go about five more minutes, and then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to come back on this again next week. This is too necessary, in my opinion. So... I will say furthermore that as we come together, one of the things about coming together is this. I once watched a, I believe it was kind of like a streetcar that somehow had a person somehow trapped between some structure and the streetcar. And I watched this one person saw this happen and he went over and began to look around and there was other people and, and, and they began to run together and they began to push on this vehicle, this, this uh, car that was holding this person bound up against something and they pushed and they pushed and then more people came and they began to push and finally they pushed with all of them working together on this same street car pushing on it the leg of that person was released and they were able to pull that person out. When we come together, we become far more effective than when we try to do things by ourselves. It will be far more effective for all of us to do this, to seek the Lord in a pressing manner until He comes and rains righteousness upon us. Till finally... The words Jesus taught us in that, what we call the Lord's Prayer, but it's actually our prayer format. He said, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in, uh, thy will be done in earth. Uh, and thy will, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. When we press on the Lord and press and press and press in prayer, finally there's going to come a time amongst us who do this that we have pressed until His kingdom actually comes and His will actually is being done in us. And then we're going further. We're going to press on Him continually in prayer so that what He has begun, oh my, the scripture said, He who hath begun a good work in you shall finish it. We're going to press on him continually so he stays with us, that his will is continually being done in us. The kingdom of God is actually coming in through us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my. Uh, you know, uh, that scripture that said, uh, you know, the Lord, hath, we are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, a holy nation. A peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light we are a chosen generous we're peculiar this unity that I'm talking about this brings us together as we press on the Lord in prayer if we will pray and pray and pray oh I see the day of Pentecost came after 10 days of praying and praying and praying and pressing on the Lord till finally he sent the Holy Ghost. If we will do the same thing, we're going to find out that this will bring us together in a glorious God-created unity with one another. And in this unity with one another, Jesus said, Father, he said, uh, he said, I want them to love to have love one to another. 
He said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love, one, two, not four, but to another. In this unity, imagine how great God's love will be in this unity. I've heard it said in our church, and I know it's been said by many others in their churches, you know, I'm closer to the members of this church than I am my family. It is this that we have in this kind of unity. We have the love to one another that is of a higher level than even our own flesh and blood families. It is God's level of love to us. It is how God's love acts toward us. Therefore, we act the same way toward our brothers and sisters. Our greatest urgent push is that we stay in that unity and that it grows. That blessed unity is the best relationship there is on earth. It exceeds that of a husband and wife, that of children and your family. It exceeds that of all of our friends. But strangely and godlyly enough, it does not take away any of the depth of those relationships. Rather, it enhances husband's love for his wife, wife's love for her husband. Their love for their children is enhanced by the spiritual unity in the body of Christ between brothers and sisters. It enhances the love we have for our family. It doesn't take away from it at all. As we press on God, the love of parents, the love of family, the love of our neighbors, the love of our enemies, all of those things rise to a level of becoming who and what we are now and how we act in Christ because we have pressed on the God who is love. His love has pressed into us. I repeat, it has happened because we have pressed on him who is love and he has pressed himself into us. So we are, as was preached last Sunday, we are in the image of Christ. That as he is, so are we in this world, in him. Can we say amen? This pressing is going to be necessary. Next week I'm going to talk about this. There's a great darkness in our country and in our world right now. It must be addressed. We're going to be facing an onslaught of Satan like we've never seen before, and we must address that in the house of God. And we must address it not just inside this building or our buildings. We must address it in the world around us because we are the light of the world. And they need Jesus, no matter how evil, no matter how black and dark it is, uh, the, the, how the prince of darkness has made things on earth, yet he cannot comprehend the light. He can't stop the light of Jesus, no matter what he does. We are that light. So I'm going to be talking next week about something very important that, as a matter of fact, uh, it is, a, it, like I said, what's good for the... The goose is good for the gander, or however you say it in your generation. I want you to know what I'm saying to you, I'm saying to myself. I had better have what it is I'm going to talk to you about next week. So the Lord bless you. I'm trying to be a little shorter so I don't wear you out. Uh, they tell me people don't have a long attention span, so I'm trying to shorten things up. So next week, I'm going to be talking about something that you really, really, really need to hear. May the Lord bless you is my prayer. Um, I am uh, going to close at this time, uh, and I would like to put this up uh, here and make sure you can hear what I'm saying. If you have any prayer needs, please write us here at Restoration Church of God of Prophecy. 8120 Old North Road, and again, any communications through the mail needs to come to Tulsa, Tulsa Oklahoma, 
74 127 no matter what it is uh, that you communicate with us by mail do not send it to Sand Springs Oklahoma uh, the the address is the same uh, 8120 Old North Road but the city is of Tulsa is where we get our mail so please send it there or if you would like to call us at 918-245-6869 and leave your prayer requests on our uh, answering machine we will take these and we will pray so at this time I want to thank you for listening I appreciate all of you that listen now in conclusion I would say this um, I'm going to go back to this screen for just a moment in conclusion if you feel like this has been worthy of sharing with anyone uh, please uh, press that um, arrow that says share and share it with everybody you can Jesus loves people and he wants to save them sanctify them fill them with the Holy Ghost call them into his ministry if you're here in this the Sand Springs Tulsa area and you're looking for a church where God is moving you have found it there are others I'm sure but here we are also God, uh, they say if you don't croak for your own pond you're not well, well you just should so I'm not croaking for me I'm croaking for the Lord who's done these wonderful wonderful things in our congregation we not we don't have a service where the Spirit of God does not move and people are not touched by the Holy Ghost and others have been healed Miracles have taken place. People are being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. It's been happening here. So we want you to come. If you're in the sands, if you're in this area and you see this broadcast, come. If you have friends that need restoration by the Lord, need someone to counsel with you, we'll do our very best to be a good counselor to you in your marriages, in your family. But we're here. So God bless you is our prayer. Father, as we come to the end of this broadcast, I ask you to minister to everyone who listened. I pray, God, that people will be raised up from the dead spiritually. I pray, God, that people that are lost would come back. If they never knew you, that they would come for the first time and be born again through Jesus Christ the Lord who so loved them that people would press their way to you God saying I get out of my way I'm coming to Jesus nothing is keeping me from this I need him in my life I pray God for everyone who has heard this that you would bless them exceeding abundant miraculously above all they're able to ask or think and we will give you the glory forevermore in Jesus name amen and amen may the Lord bless you if the, uh, by the way if you want to leave a comment to say well this actually was something I did like, and I'd like you to do more of it. If, if you want that to happen, uh, I feel to do this for just a little while this way. So may the Lord bless you. We'll see you again next week, uh, 630. Bye-bye.